Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our English and we want to improve our vocabulary. We do so by learning few new few new words every day. Today is our day number 14. Day 14. Tomorrow will be obviously day 15 and then day after tomorrow will be your quiz number 3. I give a quiz every every 5 days we get a quiz. Uh, the first quiz was based on day 1 through 5. The second quiz was based on all the words that we learned on day 6 through 10. And the third quiz that is coming up is going to be on day 11 through 15. The very first word that I want to talk about is an interesting word. Well, let's talk about it. Extinct. Of course, you know what that means. Everybody knows what it means. It's a very simple word, which simply means no longer existing. The question is, the question is, what is the antonym of extinct? What well, if extinct means no longer existing? If extinct means no longer existing, then the antonym would have to mean something that still exists. What is the word for it? Human beings are not extinct. We are extent. The antonym of extinct is extent, which simply means still existing. That's all. Do not confuse this word Do not confuse this word with EXT, ENT, extent. Don't mix them up. I should have put their pronunciation next to them, but I did not leave a room here. Extent. As opposed to extent, let me put the pronunciation somewhere here. I will put the pronunciation of this guy. The rest is the same. This is ik and this is ek, extent, extent. Extent simply means the range of something. Where did it go? The range or magnitude of something. The range or magnitude of something. For example, you might as well help him, help him to whatever extent you can, which means help him, help him however much you can. Help him to whatever extent you can. Help him to whatever extent you can. Which simply means help him As much as you can. That's it. Help him however much you can or as much as you can. That's it. So don't confuse the two words. I'm going to separate them one more time. This is with an A. Extent, which means still existing, is the antonym of extinct. And this is a different word. Extent of something is the magnitude of something, to a great extent, to a large extent, people say. 
or to some extent. Do you understand? Do you agree? There are somebody might. Do you agree? Do you so? To some extent. It means uh, to some word, uh, degree, not completely, but to some degree, to some magnitude, to some, to some range. I agree with you, but not completely, to some extent. In that case, we are using this word with an E, not with an A. With an A is the antinomial extinct. Let's go on then. That's it, I'm done. Uh, people do not know this word sometimes at all, the antinomial extinct, and sometimes they misspell it. That's why I'm covering it. It's important that you do not make, end up making the silly mistakes in your writing. They misspell it. They, they meant to say this word, but they end up using an A in their, in, their, in their writing. And the spell check, as I've said before many times, the spell check is stupid. The spell check will not correct it, because as far as the dictionary is concerned, this is spelled correctly. But it's the wrong word in the wrong context. Do you understand? You, you, you meant to use uh, this word, extent. The next word I want to talk about, on day one, on day one, if you go to, if you type in Keshwani prep dash vocab dash day one, and if you watch the video for the very first day, on the first day, I covered this word. I covered this word because this word has two pronunciation, and depending on how we pronounce the word, it has two different meanings. It can be pronounced content or it can be pronounced content. Content of something, of course, you already understand. The con you might talk about content simply means what is what is it made up of. You might talk about a content of your briefcase, you may talk about the content of your purse, you may talk about table of content of a book. It simply means, what does the book contain of? What is it made up of? What is it comprised of? A table of content tells you uh, what the book has in it. Similarly, you can talk about your content of your purse, as I said, the contents of your suitcase, the contents of your wallet and, so, uh, wallet, and so forth. That's this word, content. This same word, exact word, but if you pronounce it as content, it means to be satisfied. Are you content with it? Yes, I am. I'm satisfied with your service, I'm content with it, I'm happy with it, and so forth. Similarly, I want to talk about another word, same exact situation, with two different pronunciation and two different meaning. The word is contract which means an agreement, an agreement, either formal or written or, or oral agreement, is a contract. Where usually a written contract where two people sign, two parties sign it, and becomes a legal binding contract, and that's pronounced contract. Or this is the exact same word, pronounce contract. You see, exact same situation, exact same situation as content and content, contract and contract. What does it mean to contract? It has two different meanings. It has two meanings. Contract, this pronunciation has two meanings. One meaning of the word contract is to, to, to catch a disease. You might contract a cold, or you might contract something even more exciting, depending on which college you go to. It means to catch a disease, or to become, let's see, how did I put it here, to become infected. I don't know why I say silly things sometimes. Uh, contract means to catch a disease. Uh, and I forget how I said it, depending on what college you go to, I guess. Or some, some uh, common, you might contract a common cold or something even more exciting. 
depending on which college you go to. If you go to boarding college, all you're going to contract is a common cold. So that's like a, that's one consideration when you when you're deciding which college to go to, isn't it? Anyway, enough of the silliness. So that's that's one meaning of the contract, which means to catch a disease or to become infected. Another meaning of the word contract is to shorten or to shrink. But things usually contract in the cold weather. Railroad tracks, even bridges, they will they contract just a tiny bit in the winter and in the summer they expand. So contract, the opposite of uh, antonym of contract would be to expand. I want to talk about a few more words which means to shrink or to contract. I'm going to first, where should I put them? I want to erase these words, this part here. I want to talk about a few more words which are antonym of shorten or to shrink. I need room for it, so I'm going to erase everything and we're going to, we're going to learn four more words. So one more time. shrink to what did I say before to shrink what was the second word I used to shrink to to shorten I guess now here are the two words that we want to learn, four words that we want to learn to a bridge, to truncate, to abbreviate, and finally to curtail. These are the four words I want to, I want to talk about next. Another meaning of the word contract, we already talked about it, which means to catch a disease. So let's talk about these four words. They all mean the same thing, but not quite. They have the, we're, going to, we're going to cover them one by one, so that we know exactly what they are. Again, the words are to abridge. You may have heard of an abridged version of a, version of a, of a book or a, or, a, or a dictionary. Uh, you have this complete dictionary, uh, uh, a complete work of something, and then you have the abridged version. What does it mean to truncate? It means to cut short something, literally cut short. Abbreviate, you know what abbreviate is, you abbreviate something to shorten something. And similarly, curtail means to, to shorten or to abbreviate something. Let's cover that very quickly. These are good words to know. They are good words to know, not uh, good words to know, not just for for these tests, these tests, these exams, the GRE, the GMAT, the SAT, the TOEFL. Not only for uh, if you are preparing for these exams, but they are just good words to know in general. They are just good words to know. Period, uh, because they crop up all the time. Uh, they're going to crop up all the time in the college textbook, in the college lectures, and so forth. And, and uh, they're good to know. A bridge. The D is silent. A bridge. D is silent. It means to reduce the length of a written work. It also means to condense. To condense. So we talk as I said we talk about a bridge version of a 
a dictionary and a bridge version of a classic play or something if you don't want to read the whole uh, work of some uh, some some author if you, you know, people sell the abridged version I forget now what they're called there are many companies who will show you sell you uh, a 10 page summary of a, some a, a book uh, of war and peace if you like some thousand page book they will just summarize it into 10 or 20 pages a very abridged version or whatever it is it means to condense what does it mean to truncate? Trunk. Okay. Notice the pronunciation, it has a G in it, truncate, which simply means to shorten something. To shorten something. Now you see that's why um, we need to learn these words because all of these words that I just talked about, abridged, truncate, abbreviate and curtail, they all mean to shorten something, to abbreviate something, but they have different nuances. Nuance, if you do not know the meaning of the word, uh, I covered it on the very first day very first word of the very first day that I did was nuance which is, which means minute or subtle differences in the meanings of the word. It's a very important word which is why I covered it the very first day, the very first word. They, they all mean the same thing but they have different nuances. To truncate means to shorten something just like a bridge means to shorten something but here we're talking about a piece of uh, writing, a, a literature, piece of piece of uh, a written work. Do you understand? To truncate means to literally cut something off, to shorten something by cutting off part of it. So if you talked about uh, truncating a book, what you're doing literally is that it has a thousand page in it and you literally tear off the 999, uh, 990 pages and you're left with 10 pages of the actual book. That's not what you meant to do or say. What you meant to say was a bridge. You want to abridge the book. You want to summarize the book. You see? Whereas truncate has a, has a nuance of doing it literally. Taking, taking it and tearing it off. Truncating it. Abbreviate. Abbreviate is a good word. You already know what that means. It means to shorten a word or a phrase. To shorten a word or a phrase. I should have talked about these four words when I talked about the word nuance on the first day because this would have been a good example. Instead I talked about uh, the words uh, infamous, notorious and renowned. All of those three words, infamous, renowned and notorious, they all mean to be famous, but they have different nuances. Infamous and notorious means you're famous for something bad, something egregious, something horrible. Whereas renowned means you're, sorry, you're famous for something good. Similarly here, all of these four words that I'm talking about right now, curtail that I'm, that I'm about to do, abbreviate, truncate, abridge, they all mean to shorten, but they have different nuances. Here, when we talk about a bridge, we're talking about shortening a piece of uh, literature. Not physically tearing something off, but shortening it, summarizing it. Here, truncate means to cut something off literally. That's how, that's how you're shortening it. Over here, abbreviate means to shorten something, but not a piece of literature, but rather a word, a word, or a phrase. And if you do that, you, you are abbreviating it. For example, for, for example, where should I put this example? Because it's a good example. Right. Right here. For example, recap. Well, of course, you know what it means to recap. It means to, to go over something, to summarize something. But that is not the real word. Recap is not a word. It doesn't exist in the English language. Contrary to what most people believe, recap is not a word. Recap is, in fact, an abbreviation of a real word which is
which is recapitulate. We'll learn this thing. We'll learn this thing in the future. Recapitulate is the actual word, which means to shorten, uh, to to summarize something, to to provide an overview of something, but people don't people do not want to say recapitulate, so they abbreviate by simply saying recap. There was another word that I just a little while ago on day 13 that I was doing. Ah we talked about the word comprehensive, a comprehensive exam. If you look at the previous day video, day 13 I talked about the word comprehensive. Comprehensive means complete or thorough. And in the graduate school you're given comprehensive exam, but they are not called comprehensive. The graduate student go around referring to these as comps. Comp is an abbreviation of comprehensive. You see, you're taking one word and literally uh, taking part of it out and just shortening it. And that's abbreviating. That you will not use this word in place of a bridge or vice versa. And of course, truncate means physically doing it. Similarly, last word we have is curtail. Curtail, C-U-R-T-I-L, curtail, which means to cut short or to abbreviate. Cur tail. To cut short, or it could also means to abbreviate. But this word is more of a neutral word. You can you can use it uh, for a word or actual physical thing, I guess. To cur or you can talk about curtailing your comment, curtailing your enthusiasm. You can curtail anything. It just means to cut short, to, to, to reduce it, to lessen it, to shrink it. Again, the words were abridge, truncate, abbreviate, and uh, cur uh, curtail. Curtail, as I said, is a, is a more of a freelance uh, word. You can use it in different contexts. But these three words have specific meanings and they have to be used in the proper context because they have particular nuances that one must adhere to. Otherwise, uh, it, will, it will be out of place. All right. That was it for today. I hope you found it helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, I tutor for the GRE, the GMAT, SAT and the TOEFL. If you wish to get hold of me, I do per I provide personal private tutoring uh, over the internet via Skype or I also do face-to-face -face in, in person tutoring in Connecticut and New York City area. And I also do tutoring uh, consulting services over the telephone. If there is anything at all that I can help you in your preparation for any of these exam in your preparation of any of these exam, uh, let me know uh, by sending me an email from any of these website addresses or you can go to kashmaniprep.com and you can send me an email from there as well. Alright, thanks.